Hello everyone and welcome back to the Primary Sabbath School Review. I'm so excited that you're here. We are reviewing now the lesson for May 30, 2020. You're in lockdown, I'm in lockdown, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna have a great time checking out the Sabbath School lesson for this week. Woo! So of course, you can check out the lesson anytime you want. You don't even have to print it if you don't want. You can just look at it online at gracelink.net forward slash primary. Of course, don't forget your uh, downloadable activity sheet that I make every single week. And that one is at uniquechristiantoys.com forward slash free stuff. And check every single week. Make sure you're following your lesson, doing all the activities on there. I am just doing a review of the awesome lesson that the church makes for us every single week. Also, don't forget to share. See that little button down there? Share, because that's a great way for us to help other parents out there that are in lockdown be able to know about this resource so that their kids can also learn the lesson. All right, are you ready for a brain teaser? My brain is ready. <laughs> is yours? <laughs> okay, so here's the deal, people. A lot of these brain teasers, I don't know, I'm getting some feedback. Oh man, I got that. That was so easy. I got it like that. So guess what? I think I have the hardest brain teaser yet. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm going to read it. <clears throat> what breaks yet never falls, and what falls yet never breaks? I'll read that for you again. What breaks yet never falls, and what falls yet never breaks? <laughs> I think I got you guys this week. <laughs> All right, but go ahead and think about it. Let your brain simmer on it. Let it focus. And I'll tell you the answer at the end. <laughs> All right. I do have an artifact that I want to show you. And it's right here next to me. It's such a cute llama. Oh, you're so fluffy. Oh, it's so cute. This is a llama that I picked up in Chile. Oh, I'll talk about the llama later. <laughs> Not quite now, because the next thing we're going to do is check out our verse of the day. This week's verse is found in Genesis 9.15. It says, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. What a cool promise. As you know, we are still on the story of Noah. Yeah, but we're not going to check out the lesson part of it right here in the office. No, we've got to go outside. Let's go. Oh, I'm so excited. The top is off the Jeep. I can't wait to go for a ride in a few minutes. But first, I just wanted to touch on the story. Such an exciting story. We've been talking about it now for a month, four weeks in a row. It is such a jam-packed, action-filled story that it took four weeks to talk about it. Of course, at this point in the story, the flood is over. And Noah and all the animals and his family, they're all just kind of waiting in the boat, parked up on a mountain somewhere, just waiting for God to open the door because God knew when it would be safe to come out again. So they're waiting and waiting and waiting. But can you imagine the excitement building inside the ark? The anticipation, you know, everybody's looking down and they're seeing the little grass growing and all the trees popping the little leaves or whatever. Finally, though, God opened the door and Noah and his family came out. They were so grateful and thankful to God because they had been in the ark for a year and about a week. That is a long time caring for the animals, living under the protection of God, of course. And of course, the first thing the Bible says that Noah and his family did when they got off the ark, they didn't go around and have a celebration or a party or build a house, no. Bible says the first thing they did was gather stones to build an altar. They wanted to thank God right away for this huge protection that they had received from God. Everything else, everyone else had died, but they had survived because God loved them and protected them. So they built this altar and thanked God for protecting them. And of course, the next job that they had to do, important job, was release all the animals. Can you imagine the excitement? They all come out and they're rolling around in the grass, nibbling on the grass, rolling in it, and the birds stretching their wings finally and flying around. Oh, what an exciting time. But as they overlooked this whole scene, they still had that thankful attitude in their hearts and in their minds. 
And something interesting happened. The Bible tells us that right then and there, God promised that he would never destroy the earth again with water. And the cool thing is, he gave us a sign, a symbol of that promise. And I think you know what that sign is. He put a rainbow in the sky, a huge, beautiful, colorful rainbow. And the Bible says that every time we see that, we are to be remembered of God's protection and his promise to us there at that event on that mountain. I hope you never forget that. And every time you see a rainbow, you're reminded of that. We just saw a rainbow in my front yard just a couple of days ago because a big storm had come through and right away I still remembered God's promise of His protection and His love. Every time you see a rainbow, think of that promise that God gave us. God loves you so much and protects you every day. How about we go for a ride in the Jeep now? <laughs> Let's go. I remember when I was a kid, I loved to ride bike. Oh, that was my favorite. And every summer, my dad, he would plan a trip for us. Not just a little bike ride, like an all day trip. And when I was like 11 or something, maybe 10, he planned this big day trip bike ride thing to Martha's Vineyard. That's an island that's part of Massachusetts. And we were gonna pack a lunch, we were gonna pack our bikes, it was my dad, my sister and I, and we were gonna go and spend the whole day riding around Martha's Vineyard. They had bike trails and roads all the way around. We were so excited. Oh man, we got our lunch ready, we got our bikes and all our stuff. Drove down to Woods Hole, that's the name of the town where we would get the ferry. And we got on the first ferry in the morning, got to Martha's Vineyard and started on our bike ride. It was awesome, because it's a beautiful island. Beautiful beaches and cute little towns, these colonial buildings. Oh, we had a blast. Something happened though. When we were about five miles away from getting back to the ferry, because we needed to catch the ferry to get back home. And by the way, it was the last ferry of the day. When we were about five miles from the ferry, I got a flat tire. Oh, man, that's not good. Oh, I was scared. Of course, we pulled over and my dad looked it over and mm, we didn't have any kind of repair kit or pump or anything. My dad, he was too big because, you know, he was a full grown man and I was just a little kid on a little kid's bike. He couldn't ride my bike for me. So he looked at me and said, you're gonna have to ride your bike with a flat all the way back to the ferry. And he said, it's gonna be hard. It's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be twice as hard. And I said, okay, Dad. And he was right, it was twice as hard, if not more. But I tried my best. But something interesting happened. As we were driving, he kept getting farther and farther ahead. And I was trying to keep up. And I was like, Dad, wait up for me. And of course, as a little kid, I'm like, worried that my dad forgot about me here. Why is he leaving me behind? And of course, made me work harder to keep up with him and keep up with him. I found out afterwards why he did that. Because we barely made it to the ferry. If he wouldn't have stayed ahead, always, I could see him always, but always ahead, that's what pushed me to work harder to keep up with him. And since I could always see him, I knew I was always safe and protected. But some people would call that tough love. You know, I was scared at the moment. I feel like I was getting left behind. But in reality, my dad was always there. And he was working to protect me, to get us back to that ferry on time so that we could make it back home. Sometimes we focus on just the scary part and we forget to remember that God is protecting us always, at all times, even when it seems like we're in a scary position. Never forget. God is with us, always. And sometimes it might seem like tough love. All right, how about we check in with Dusty and Feather? Let's see what those guys are up to today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it doesn't matter which hemisphere you are watching from, it's now time to check in with the most lovable critters in the forest, Dusty and Feather. 
Hello, everyone! Hello to all. We're so happy that you're with us here in the forest. Oh, yes, our favorite place in the world, frogs and all. Dusty, I'm impressed. You are doing a great job learning to deal with your fear of frogs and toads. Uh, yes, I figured if God protected Noah and all the animals during the flood for a whole year, I know God could protect me from all the killer frogs out there. There are no killer frogs out there. See, isn't God amazing? Uh, okay, well, moving right along. Today we are talking about an animal that is good at guarding and protecting. Ooh, ooh, ooh I know, I know, I know, a dog. Well, uh, it's true that dogs are very good at protecting, but I thought today we could tell the kids about another animal that is also good at guarding and protecting. Please don't say frog. No, uh, a little bigger. Ooh, a guessing game. Uh, a hippo? Uh, no, a little smaller, less chubby. Hmm, a raccoon? Bigger. Uh, Dusty, I have a feeling I'm going to be guessing for hours. Uh, that's true. The animal is probably going to surprise a lot of people. It's the llama. A llama? Really? Don't, don't they just stand around chewing on grass? Uh, well, yes, they do have to eat, and yes, they do like to stand around chewing on grass. Uh, he here's a picture of one. Aw, cute! Nice hairdo! So, are they really good at protecting and guarding? Yep. They may not look very tough. Very tough? They don't look tough at all, Feather! Uh, yeah, that, that, that's true. But the thing about them is that they're very territorial. Territorial? What does that mean? Uh, well, that means that they're ready to fight to protect their turf. Farmers actually use them to graze along with sheep. Really? Sheep and llamas hanging out together? <laughs> it's like a little party. Uh, not quite a party. They're just both happy, chomping on grass. But if a predator comes along, the sheep doesn't really know how to protect itself. But if the llama is there, what, 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 well, what happens? What does it do? Does it, does it have a huge loud roar? Does it have huge claws on its feet? Uh, nope, and nope. So, what does it do? They look so, so harmless and fluffy. I feel like hugging one. Have you ever tried hugging a llama? I can confidently say that I have not tried, yet. Don't. If they feel like a threat is nearby, they will first start with a posture to alert everyone that there's something dangerous around. Ooh, here's my posture when danger is around. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty scary, Dusty. What, what else do they do? Well, since they're very stubborn and fearless, next they would start these screaming noises and even start rushing towards the threat. Plus, they also put themselves between the threat and the herd, and they also can kick pretty hard and even spit. Spit? That's disgusting. Yeah. Does it work? Uh, well, apparently. Don't get any ideas, Feather. That's pretty impressive, though. Yep. They can chase off foxes and coyotes and other small predators. Feather, for being all cute and fluffy, they're pretty good at protecting. Hey, cute and fluffy, that's us! Uh, yeah. We may be a little low on the stubborn and fearless part, though, huh? You think? Uh, frogs, Dusty? True. Uh, you know, I'm out of here. I I'm gonna go practice being stubborn and fearless and my posture. This should be interesting. Bye, everyone. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dusty and Feather. I think I'd be interested in seeing uh, Dusty's uh, fearless and stubborn posture. <laughs> All right, it's time for game show. Oh, I know you guys have been paying attention because you do every week and you do such a good job. Are you ready? I'm gonna ask you five questions. If you know the answer, just go ahead and shout it out. Bah! Just top of your lungs. Don't worry, nobody's gonna bother you about it. You're just gonna be happy that you know the answers, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. Question number one. Oh, I love that sound. Ding. All right, question number one. What sign did God use to let us know that he promised never to clean the world again with water? That's right, a rainbow! Good job, good job. All right, let's check out question number two. True or false? The first thing Noah and his family built when they got off the ark was a shelter. That's right. False. First, they built an altar. 
thank God for protecting them. Good job, guys. All right, let's check out question number three now. What was the name of the island that I went on a bike ride with my dad and my sister? That's right, Martha's Vineyard, just off of the coast of Massachusetts. All right, here we go, question number four. What country did I buy my nice fluffy llama in? <laughs> That's right, in Chile. That's in South America, of course you know that. All right, we're at question number five already. Can you believe it? Here we go. Question number five. True or false? Llamas spit to scare off any threats. <laughs> That's right. It's true. But don't get any ideas, all right? Don't go around spitting on people. That's just a llama thing. Actually, I think camels do that too, right? <laughs> all right, good job. I am positive you guys got all five. All right, you know what time it is. It's time for Brain Teaser. That was a hard one this week, wasn't it? Did I stump you? Did you get to think about it enough? All right, I'm gonna read it for you one more time. Last chance to see if you can figure it out. Here we go. What breaks yet never falls, and what falls yet never breaks? <laughs> the answer is morning and night. Get it? Morning breaks, night falls. <laughs> Did I get you? I don't know. Some of you guys are pretty smart out there. Man, good job, guys. Hey, really quick before we finish, don't forget, study guide sheet there is on our website, uniquechristiantoys.com forward slash free stuff. Check out our store as well. There's this whole store there with a bunch of cool products and resources and books to help you get closer to God. And of course, don't forget to check out your lesson throughout the week. Next week, download it for free. Be ready for next week and it's game shows. All right, let's bow our heads now and pray together. Dear Jesus, dear Father, thank you so much for this story of Noah. What a great example and way to tell us how much you love us for protecting us when things seem to go sour and, and rough around us, Lord. We're just so grateful that you are always there with us. Help us to never forget that, to always trust in you for everything. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I am excited already to see you next week. Take care, guys. Bye.